When it comes to small homes, there's a lot to be said for keeping the design simple, but doing it really well. The shipping container that we're about to visit is a brilliant example of that. G'day Shane. Hey Bryce, how are you? Thanks for coming. No worries mate, great to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Now this is a very impressive looking container. Yes, we're very, very happy with it. It's we're a 20 foot, is it? A 20 foot high cube and we've attached a couple of pods to each side to give it a bit more width and space inside. These pop-outs are such a good idea, aren't they? Yeah. Really seems to add a lot more space to the design. Absolutely. Containers are only eight foot wide and when you're inside you get quite a confined feeling. Yeah. So by adding the pop-outs it just gives us a whole lot more room inside to a feeling of spaciousness, basically. Are these actually removable or are they fixed in place? This one, they're fixed in place. They could be removable, but the issue is, from an engineering point of view, they're quite a heavy, substantial unit and there's a bit of engineering involved to attach them to the, to the actual container. You could make them removable, but this one, they're fixed, yes. I've always liked shipping containers. I like the cubistic shape of them. They're so simple and minimalistic, they're just cool. So I guess that's why I decided to use a shipping container. Also structurally they're very strong, so you have a cool space that's structurally sound, reasonably cheap to buy, and you've got a good foundation to start your design from. And what's this for? Because you, you don't live in this, do you? This was just sort of something for guest accommodation yeah. or yeah. a little bit of extra space? Yeah. My wife's from China, so we have overseas family coming and visiting occasionally. So we needed just a little bit of extra space and, and something separate to, from us. And uh, that was the answer. Perfect. Well, I'm really keen to see inside and have a look at what you've done. Absolutely. Come on in. All right. I love how open and spacious this design is. This is really impressive. Yeah, we've tried to keep it as light and as airy as possible. I'm immediately drawn to this great alcove here. That's a fantastic place for relaxing. When we first built the pod tainer, actually the first evening we got it finished, my wife, my son and I, we just sat down there and, and had a wine and relaxed and enjoyed the view. Yeah, fantastic place. Absolutely, because yeah. it's so it's so deep and you can just, you know, really just yep, properly lounge just out and relax absolutely here, Absolutely, eh? just relax and enjoy. And what a view you've got here as well. Hmm. Spectacular. Yep. Yeah, I really like that idea. And I mean, one of the things that's immediately noticeable about this design is how it's really open plan, but also really cleverly separates the space with this dividing wall, doesn't it? Uh, with a few simple design ideas, we've tried to have distinctive areas in, in a really small space. So for instance, this curved carpet here, just sort of sections off the lounge area. And then you've got the kitchen, just a subtle material and colour change, and likewise our little corner table, and, and the bedroom area. So we've tried to give every area its own unique sort of look, I guess. We just wanted like a really simple, um, almost like a bit of a modern apartment feel to it. And uh, the plywood, you know, simple varnish plywood ceiling, spotlights, the little uh, display alcoves and things like that. Yeah, very, very happy. And I think little things like this are really clever because if you are in a small space, it's good to be able to separate sections off, but Absolutely. you don't necessarily want to completely enclose them because then it actually can feel confined. Yeah. Whereas this way you get kind of the best of both worlds, yeah. don't you? And the advantage with this too, we designed it so it would flood a little bit more light into the bedroom area. Yeah. yeah. Really clever what you've done here as well, actually, by not having this come out directly at 45 degrees mm. because you kind of make this a bit more of a welcoming space and kind of channel people into here. But when you're in the bedroom as well, you get a bit more space and Absolutely. it sort of opens up. So Absolutely. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. When I sketched out the design for this, this wall, it was really a case of building the interior and then we put the wall in and we moved it angle. What You can draw as much as you want to draw, but at the end of the day, it's a case of sometimes just, you know, putting the partition in or the thing you're building and have a little bit of a play around and see what works the best. But this way you still have access to the bedroom, so it's a good compromise. Can we have a look in the bedroom? Absolutely, come on through. All right. 
Welcome to our tiny but hopefully practical, usable little bedroom space. Yeah, this has a really great feeling to it, doesn't yeah. it? So I noticed the bed's quite a bit raised off the floor. That was just for extra storage? Absolutely, there's stacks of storage underneath. It was designed so if we had visitors, suitcases could be slid under easily and you could still pop them open, reach in without having to drag them out. Yeah. Um, so just a little bit more space and it's still easy to get on and in and out of the bed at this height. Yeah. Because sometimes the storage like this is actually the most practical. If you divide it up with cupboards and drawers mm. and all of that sort of thing, quite often it actually limits what you can store under it. Whereas something like this where it's just a really large open mm. space, you could pack a ton of stuff under Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And it was important for us when we designed it that it was basically a walkthrough design. I know a lot of designs have areas that you can fold out or lift up, which I think is fantastic. But for us, we wanted a design that everything was as it is and you didn't need to collapse something to move around. So with areas like this, it's always going to be a compromise. Um, but for us, the compromise works. And the bathroom is in this pop-out behind us here. Yep, small but practical. So. Uh, Come on in and have a look. All right. Oh yeah, this is great. So this is our shower area. It's a 700 by one meter shower. Oh, so, so a good size shower then. Yeah, good size shower. I'm six foot three and I can fit in it okay. Great. So that's great. And then we've got just a little vanity here. And around the corner, we've got our toilet area. Small but practical. And so in this space, tell me a little bit about the uh, power hookups, water, where's all that coming from? Are you just hooked into the mains here? Uh, that's what we will do eventually, yes. Yep, yeah. Yep, that's the sun plus. You could have a water tank outside, but we've got a huge water capacity here anyway, so that's not a problem. Great. Um, and likewise, if you wanted to go off the grid, that's also an option, I guess. Uh, but at this stage, it's all just connected. As far as the cooking side of things goes, because it's a small space and it was for guests, we didn't really want to have a gas cooker in here. So what we're going to opt for is just a microwave in there. Mm -hmm. And you can always have a stovetop oven or something in one of the cupboards. And I guess if people want to do gas cooking, there's the barbecue outside. I know that this was actually predominantly designed for guest accommodation, mm -hmm. but this is bigger and nicer than a lot of the central city apartments I've seen. This could really easily be a full-time living setup, couldn't it? it? It depends on the person. Some people are into living minimally, and you could still live very comfortable, but a minimal lifestyle in this. Like, obviously, you can't fit as many clothes or as many bits and pieces as a normal house. But if you cut back a little bit, it'd be a fantastic place to live. Tell me a little bit about the process of building this and maybe some of the things that you've learned along the way. The build process was pretty straightforward. It's not rocket science. You've just got to do a bit of homework, for instance, go on sites like your site and you'll learn a lot. Um, the whole secret, what I found with, certainly if you're building with a shipping container, is uh, as soon as the weather gets a little bit chilly, you have a condensation issue. So the insulation side of things is super important. This is all a sealed uh, spray foam insulation. For me, the most interesting part of the project was the design stage and how little tweaks in the design can really make a difference to the visual outcome. So for example, when we put this wall in, uh, it originally had just simple things like it had a straight corner here or a 90 degree corner and just by rounding off this corner it makes the flow from the lounge area to the bedroom area just flow nicer and gentler mm. without sounding like a design twit but it just it flows nicer. And I guess it's just those things that you almost have to get into the space and play around with an experiment to find out what's going to work and what's not. Absolutely. I think you can draw and do as many sketches as you want, um, but uh, that'll give you the basic layout and everything. But it's not until you start adding colours 
or you know dimensions or materials that you get an idea of what the finished example is going to look like yeah it was just a really fun thing to do it was fun to design it was fun to build um, immensely satisfying once it was finished you know you see you get to see what you've done through your efforts and uh, the, the whole project was great I think for people who are struggling with the cost of housing nowadays, portable homes are a great solution. Uh, and whether it be a container or, or another smaller style portable home, I think uh, the real advantage of for people, or certainly or any age group, people living in a smaller house that costs them less, is they can put any extra money. They, first of all, they can become hopefully freehold quicker. And then any extra money they have, they can enjoy their lives with it a bit or put the money into an investment and then go out and enjoy themselves. Because it seems to me nowadays the biggest thing lacking in a lot of people's lives is free time and, and actually getting a chance to enjoy things. And that's the advantage of something like this. And what was the budget for this build? Uh, the budget for this build, excluding my labour, it cost me 28000 And then there was about two and a half months worth of labour involved. That's less than your average Aucklander would spend in a year in rent. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with a bit of effort, if someone was to do this themselves over, say, a year's part-time work on the weekends and that, a young person could produce something like this and save a heap of money on rent. Well Shane, I think your trial and error in this case has really paid off. You've created a fantastic space and even though it wasn't necessarily designed to be lived in full time, this is a place where I think I could really comfortably see myself living. So congratulations on a job really well done. Well thanks for that, I appreciate the compliment and um, thanks for coming out. This shipping container may be a small space, but there's a lot of really big ideas that have gone into making it work. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'd mind calling this place home. <laughs>